flag salute cases began in a small town in Pennsylvania called Minersville. Two Jehovah's Witness children, Lillian and William, November 5th, 1935, decide they're not going to salute the American flag. November 6th, 1935, the school superintendent is horribly offended by this. And so he introduces a new regulation that requires all students to state the Pledge of Allegiance. Afterwards, they were kicked out of school. They had to end up traveling an hour each way, each day, to a small Jehovah's Witness school outside of town because that was the only way they could get an education. In that time, the family was physically attacked, their store was boycotted, so they took their case to the courts to say that a mandatory Pledge of Allegiance was a violation of their religious freedom. 1940, it's decided eight to one against the Gobitis children. The case was decided right after the fall of France. That, in some ways, is considered to have played into the mindset of those justices who passed it. They thought, we need the flag to be able to give us national unity, that this is the core of our national defense. It's really horrific what happened. There were harassment of Jehovah's Witnesses across the country. Over 1,500 different reported acts of violence against Jehovah's Witnesses. Not the things that people think of as being part of American history, but unfortunately are. This was one of the shortest lasting Supreme Court decisions, if not the shortest, in history. So three years after the Gobitis case, another case comes up to the Supreme Court, West Virginia Board of Education versus Barnett, challenging the almost exactly same wording over the requirement to say the Pledge of Allegiance and have a flag salute. But this time, the Supreme Court reversed itself. It was overturned by largely the same court, the same members. And what they said was, we were wrong. National unity is important, but nothing is so important that we need to coerce people to affirm things that they don't believe. A very brilliant uh, legal maneuver of shifting the discussion away from freedom of conscience and into freedom of speech that free speech is not only the freedom to be able to fly a flag if I want to, but to choose not to salute the flag if I want to. That compelled speech violates the Constitution. It's about freedom of conscience. That's a core human quality that each of us as Americans needs to protect. This case is important because it was a mistake and the court recognized it's a mistake. Sometimes we get it wrong. Our history with religious freedom isn't perfect. These cases really shaped our understanding and continue to shape our understanding about what religious freedom is and what that constitutional clause guarantees each and every American. Also a testament to the enduring nature of religious freedom in America. The same court that got it wrong a few years later could get it right. Freedom of religion, freedom of speech, these are core to who we are, this is core to what the Constitution means, and that you can't have a constitutional order unless you have protections for these.